They say money makes the world go round. I say asset tracking makes the world go round. Can you imagine what our world would be like without the ability to track our goods? I shudder at the thought. But what if you want to develop your own asset tracking solution? Well then, you've got to keep in mind processing, security, sensing, connectivity, and power management. Phew. Or you could just watch this chalk talk. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Multi-connectivity asset tracking is a critical element of our modern supply chain. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Colin Renrotten and Manuel Cantone from ST Microelectronics join me to discuss the common needs required for asset tracking today, why low power processing is vital for these kind of applications, and how ST Microelectronics Astra platform can help you get started on your next asset tracking design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. Hi, Colin. Thank you so much for joining me. Glad to be here. And hi, Manuel. Thank you for joining me. Hi, thanks. Okay, so today, asset tracking is a critical element to our supply chain. What use cases, Manuel, are you seeing these kind of applications playing a big role in? So asset tracking uh, refers to a very broad range of use cases. We can go from monitoring shipping containers, parcels, luggage, food, medicines, tools and utensils, or even livestock and pets. But basically, we refer to any method of tracking a physical asset. And that goes from uh, scanning a barcode attached to the asset uh, in consideration at various points of inspection using tags or using dynamic tags and active technology like GPS, BLE, RFID, and even cellular data and ultra-wide area network connectivity, as you will see during this presentation. We can see in this slide a segmentation of various access tracking applications. We have outdoor real-time monitoring like containers, e-bikes, scooter, or fleet management, and those require the most investment in technology, real-time positioning, and wide area band connectivity. Then uh, we can uh, further categorize down into indoor location and warehouse logistics. And here we are talking about management of pallets, luggage, smart parcels, and good guarantees like cold chain or medical shipment. And in this application, uh, we might require a, a slightly lower cost solution, but still fairly smart and with localization capability and definitely still reusable. And still going down, on the other hand, there are some applications like personal letters, packages, parcels, that hardly can justify a cost for the service and would require a one-time disposable solution. So as a general term, as you see, different scenarios can be encompassed under the asset tracking term. But considering all these different scenarios, one can actually find a lot of commonality in the tracking device components to accomplish each task. So Manuel, what are the common needs and differentiators in a tracker? This visual is quite busy, but it's trying to show and address exactly this question. Let me start with sensing, which is the product line I'm responsible of. When we talk about sensors, the needs in an asset tracking are usually fairly similar in every application. There's a most likely temperature, there can be humidity, maybe pressure for exact height location. There's definitely positioning sometime with the GPS module, and a big one can be motion. Motion sensors can be really helpful in understanding if a package is uh, handled, if it's handled correctly, or if it's receiving uh, some shocks. So a lot of commonality, various price points. So it really depends on what you need to track uh, and you will select the right type of sensors. Yeah, and that's great, Manuel. So aside from the sensor part of it, we have the connectivity side of it, which again, varies from one application to the next. When you consider the application we have, there are various short range versus long range connectivity for every application and can be used either separately or together to increase the reliability or to even to the application that you're trying to track, it may require that additional type of connectivity. When you look at the different types of connectivity, they all also represent different cost and power constraints. The goal is to have the right wireless connectivity that fits the range, accuracy and power budget and cost for each of the different applications. 
So if we take one of the use cases here, I'll try and illustrate what I'm trying to discuss. For instance, an outdoor real-time monitoring application can use GNSS, as we all know. So this is just the regular plain old GPS. However, GNSS may not fit the size or the budget requirement, which is the cost requirement. Then you would have to use something different, such as Bluetooth LD, ultra high frequency NFC, or a different type of communication system. LP WAN can be used, but uh, typically Bluetooth LE or ultra UHF NFC is a good fit for that. So in the case of Bluetooth LE, that's about 60 centimeters in terms of the accuracy, or UHF NFC is 60 to 30 centimeters. Roughly, that means the accuracy requirement. So essentially, you would have to choose for the application the right wireless technology that fits your cost budget and your requirement for accuracy. This is the reason why SD Microelectronics provides multiple solutions for wireless connectivity, and our portfolio continues to grow as we move forward and new connectivity and applications are found and are valid for our customers. So Colin, multi-connectivity seems to be a key for some of the applications you just described. There is a difference between monitoring and tracking, right? Can you talk about that a bit? There is a difference between monitoring and tracking with accuracy, if you want to consider it that way. So considering the complexity, power consumption, and costs, we can understand why one approach is used over the other. If we look at monitoring, this can be viewed as a simple status message sent from the device to a receiver or concentrator that's good enough for this application. So when we look at that, the application does not need to be very complex. Either one type of wireless channel or avenue can be used for this application. As you're monitoring, the idea is to get the message from the sender to the receiver. And as long as it meets the requirements, you fulfilled the application requirements. Now, some monitoring applications can have stringent timing, communication, and payroll requirements. But these applications can be considered as tracking instead of monitoring. Power consumption can be minimal in this application as the status messages can be defined as to how frequent or how infrequent messages are sent. Then if there is an emergency or some sort of key event, you can provide a more critical message, a more time-constrained message and a higher priority message. Then when we look at cost, cost can be reduced as monitoring can be minimal depending again on the end application. When we look at tracking, we look at that is you need to know exactly where your IoT device is with a certain amount of accuracy. This is where multiple wireless technologies can be used to take advantage of the benefits of each of the different technologies. In this case, IoT devices can be simple, but usually they're more complex as they provide a very specific use case and again, must be reliable. Power consumption in this use case is typically higher and as the reliability of the tracking and the types of messages they're providing are higher priority than just plain old monitoring that I described. The cost is usually higher on these devices because you need multiple radios, increased reliability, and accuracy that's all driving the requirements of the application. So depending on the type of application, there are multiple connectivity solutions that meets the requirements for the total solution. Colin, what does ST Microelectronics offer in this realm? ST Microelectronics is a broadline semiconductor manufacturer. So essentially, we make all of the components that go into the IoT devices, asset tracking, and we have other business units and focuses. But again, these are the building blocks for all of these devices. Considering IoT devices, we provide the full range of building blocks, as I mentioned, to build your device, except for passive devices. Now, those are you know, resistors and capacitors, which ST does not make. And we provide solutions to bring it from concept to mass production. To make it easier for our customers to develop with our technology, we provide an entire ecosystem of development boards that range from single application to multiple use application development boards. When we show at the bottom here, as I mentioned, we provide single and uh, multiple use application development boards. These are the ones that we show here. So the NFC, the sensor tag, the sensor tile box, and the one that we have here, which is the multi-connectivity Astra 1B board. These boards represent more than just one single building block, but represent a particular application use case. Excellent. So Colin, can we take a deeper look at your latest edition, the Astra? Yes, we can. As you can see, the board on the left here has a lot of different devices and the connectivity very tightly packed into that one board. And it comes with the blue case that you show here. 
So when we look at the processing on the board, we have two different types of processing devices. So the STM32WB is a dual core Bluetooth LE 5.3 certified device with 802.15.4 functionality. So that's Zigbee thread and again, matter on top of that. So that the STM32WB can be used to run the application or it can be used just for, for Bluetooth uses only. Then on the other side, we have the STM32WL, which is a sub gigahertz SOC device. This device is capable of doing not just FSK, but also LoRaWAN modulation. So it can participate in LoRaWAN networks as well as Sigfox networks. So with this STM32WL, you have your longer range connectivity than you would with the STM32WB device. Then we have the STSafe A110. The STSafe A110 is a secure micro device, or as some understand it, a trusted platform module. This device has the highest security that we can bring to an IoT device where we use this device in banking, and it's known in the industry as having the proper security so that you can take a device, pre-provision it, and send it to the field without having a nefarious hacker or someone take the information out of there and copy it or use it for any sort of other means. Then we have the ST25DV, which is an NFC device for short-range connectivity, and the Tessio LIV3F, so LIV3F for the GNSS. And I'll hand it over to Manuel to do the power and the motion sensors. Thanks, Colin. We have a full set of power components here on Astra to do the power management. We have a DCDC converter ST1PS02. It's a, a nano-quiescent synchronous step-down converter with a digital voltage selection. Then we have the STBC03, the battery charger. That uh, blue package that you see holds also a battery, so it's a full-blown system, battery operated system that you see there. And the TCPP01 is a single chip solution for USB Type-C port uh, protection. And then talking about sensors, uh, Astra is fully equipped to be an excellent starting point to do a proof of concept for an asset tracking. We have temperature with the STTS22H, which is a low voltage, ultra low power, 0.5 degree C accuracy device, also NIST certifiable, which is a requirement in the most asset tracking application. We have LPS22HH, a barometric pressure sensor that can be used to uh, compute a shift in altitude with the, the addition of a reference point, also absolute altitude. We have uh, LIS2DTW12, a combo accelerometer and temperature. It's a device that will sense uh, motion, significant motion, and uh, sometimes the only motion sensor that you will need in an application. And then we have an IMU, LSM6DSO32X. An IMU is an inertia measurement unit, a combination of a gyroscope and an accelerometer. So if you want redundant with the Excel, but some of the application will require more granularity and understand also if uh, the device is, for example, rotated or handled, or as the 32 refers in the part number, handled with higher shocks. So while the accelerometer LISTW12 is a 16G rated accelerometer, the LSM 6DSO32X is a 32G rated accelerometer. The X in the end stands for intelligence in the edge. That sensor has a programmable logic as well that can basically help reducing the further power of the system. So Manuel, and these types of applications, low power data processing is really important, right? What kind of solutions would you suggest to help solve this issue? So we developed that technology, the machine learning core, exactly to provide the flexibility to uh, our end customer to process in a much lower power environment. One of the main industry trends in IoT is to distribute intelligence to allow part of the application to be processed locally. And this represents a unique opportunity to move computation from the cloud to the sensors, but also in the sensor node to provide the real-time elaboration and thanks to the machine learning core in the sensors, move the processing further down to the sensor itself to perform computation at the sensor IC level itself. If you think about a typical application use case, the duty of the sensor is to stream raw data to the microcontroller and the micro to run all the necessary processing. With the machine learning core functionality of our latest sensor, we enable a much more power efficient working principle. 
So the sensor itself not only now captures data, but also run a machine learning call algorithm in the ASIC of the sensor itself, leveraging techniques such as decision tree classifier, implementing an in-sensor classification engine, and wake up the microcontroller only when needed. This technique of floats computation from the main microcontroller, allowing it to focus on high-level processing when waked up by the sensor through interrupt. We were talking about asset tracking. An example of a machine learning core use in the asset tracking is the capability to recognize from the sensor itself if the package equipped with this sensor is still, so maybe it's in a warehouse sitting on a storage, or if it's in a truck, or if it's handled by an operator. And all of that can be understood and communicated to the microcontroller just based on motion data. How does the Astra help me here, especially when it comes to the sensing and connectivity aspects? So Astra being the hardware and the software provides you with all of the layers you need to evaluate and accelerate your design. When we look at the part number here that's shown on the slide, the FP actually means function pack which is provided as a high-level application for the Astra board. The function packs are the backbone of any reference design that we provide at ST. Below the function pack, you can see different blocks that make up the Astra board. So when we look at each of the blocks, we start with the hardware, which again is the Astra hardware. And then on top of that, we have the software that starts in blue. So the hardware extraction layer, this allows customers to develop their application and access the hardware through API calls instead of register level calls. The benefit for developers is we have the same hardware extraction layer when moving from one STM32 to another STM32. We provide the middleware blocks to allow for flexible development and usages of the main hardware components. As you can see here, STWPAN, Parson Sequencer, USB, BLE Manager, SDK, Low Power Manager, GNSS and STSafe, these are all high-level middlewares that are available with APIs so that customers don't have to write all of the different software to access and to use these devices in the way that they were intended to be used. Then on top of that, we have, again, the function pack, which is the Astra function pack that provides a fully working example of all of the different middlewares, the hardware extraction layer, working together on the STEVAL Astra 1B board to allow them to evaluate, in this case, the multi-connectivity asset tracking application. Since this is a more advanced evaluation kit, we have a mobile app and a dashboard that's available through a website so that customers can connect the Astra evaluation board to the cloud or to your phone and fully use the device in the way it was intended to be used. This goes beyond what most manufacturers provide in their evaluation kit and solidifies that our development boards do exactly what we say they can do in a real working case. Excellent. So Manuel, can you talk a bit more about these other components needed to build an end-to-end -end asset tracking solution? Absolutely. So the end-to-end -end concept within ST is what we define also as the sensor to cloud. Here, the sensor is Astra, and it's trying to send messages to a central location. So uh, there are various ways of doing it. And uh, we had uh, two components needed. Then there needs to be a gateway, and then there needs to be a cloud application. There's also need to be a mean to configure Astra. And that's where the first component comes into place, the ST Asset Tracking BLE application. Astra can communicate via BLE, and as a short-range communication, you can connect a pair with your phone and through the phone, configure all the sensors, the output data rate, which sensor is on and off, if you want to use GNSS or not, things like that. And then uh, you can also set uh, triggers to start and stop uh, logging activity. If uh, the sensor is on the warehouse, maybe you don't want to flood the memory with sensing data. All of these can be done through the ST Asset Tracking application. And as you can see, it supports also other type of trackers, the sensor box, which is a BLE tracker, and the smart tag, an NFC-based dynamic tag tracker. The other component to the sensor to cloud application is the cloud component. This is an application that runs remotely, 
we built uh, our application on uh, AWS. There is a new URL to reach this website and we call it the dashboard asset tracking. It's a very intuitive web-based uh, application where once you log in with your MySD.com account, you will see the sensor node that you deployed in the field popping out and you can do collection, visualization, and analysis of asset tracking position. You can see the data from the sensor themselves. And the, all of these mixing and matching the various sensor, the NFC sensor tag, the sensor tile box, and now the ST Eval Astra. This is a, a sandbox kind of application. It's a, an environment fully run by ST and uh, free of charge for our customers to use uh, to build a quick uh, proof of concepts. So Colin, can you walk me through the design process a bit? How would a designer get from the development kit to the application? So the development kits have a function pack associated with them. And the ones that we show on the slide here, these ones have a specific function pack that allows a designer to start with the hardware and build their application on top of. So for instance, aside from actually purchasing the hardware, you would just go to www.st.com sign up for a MyST account, and then you would be allowed to download these different packages as we show here. So for the NFC, it would be the FPSNS Smart Tag 1. For the sensor tile box, you can see the FPATR BLE1 firmware. And for the Astra, the FPATR Astra 1 firmware. Once they start with that, these boards have the programmer for the microcontrollers already built onto them. Now, for the STM32s, we provide a free IDE, which is called STM32 Cube IDE for customers to use. If they already have Kyle or IAR, that's fully compatible with these packages as well. So that would start them off for the development point of view and the software for the development platform. Once they develop their software or when they're in development, they also have these apps, as you can see here, the SD Tracking Asset app that they can use to test and to ensure that their application does what they intend it to do. So the ST Tracking Asset app is available from the App Store, either iOS or Android, download it from the iOS and Android store. And again, once the application is at a certain function level, it can connect to it. Now, if a customer doesn't want to actually modify the firmware that we provide for the different solutions here, the Astra, the Sensor Tile, and the Smart Tag, they do come already pre-configured and already available to use in a functioning example, which is with the, again, you see here, the ST tracking asset app. Now, the one that's shown here that's a little bit more involved is, again, the LoRa icon that you see on the bottom. There's an arrow that goes to a LoRa network server. ST does provide a solution for a very simple LoRa packet forwarding gateway. However, Customers that understand LoRa and know the LoRaWAN network usually have their own gateway or some sort of gateway to the cloud that they already connect to. So it would be a matter of taking the personalization from that network provider and installing it on our hardware, which is as simple as taking the firmware package, putting in the right directives for the keys and, and the associated information for that network server and allowing it to connect. Then when we look at the other part of this, which is the dashboard, any laptop can access the DSH asset tracking dashboard on a browser. As long as you have associated username, you'll be able to access this dashboard and you'll have your end-to-end -end solution from board to cloud. Awesome. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Manuel. Thank you, Amelia, for having me. And thank you for joining me, Colin. Thank you, Amelia. It was a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.